We begin this hour with another blow to global trade. India announced retaliatory trade tariffs against the U.S. on 28 products, including almonds, apples, and walnuts. The new duties, some as high as 70 percent, took effect on Sunday. The relationship between the U.S. and India has grown sour in recent weeks after the Trump administration ended India's participation in a preferential trade program earlier this month. Joining us now to break it down is Steve Gill, former official of the U.S. Trade Representative's Office. Steve, thank you for your time. Thanks, Sarah. Now, India initially issued an order to raise some of these import taxes on U.S. items last June. This was when the Trump administration first issued tariffs on steel and aluminum, but they postponed those duties. Now, besides protecting their own economy, what message are they really trying to send here, or what leverage are they trying to gain? Well, I think it's all about trying to protect their own economy. They've had tariffs and non-tariff barriers for quite some time. Now, you've got tariffs, which are taxes, and then you've got other things that keep other countries' products or services out of your own country, and they've been imposing those for a long time. And what the Trump administration has said is, look, you all now have a growing, thriving economy. You don't need special protections, and we certainly don't need a situation where you're charging high tariffs on U.S. products, goods, and services, and non-tariff barriers that keep us out of your market while you have open access to our own. Uh, why this matters so much is India, like China, is a country with over a billion people. So you have a lot of U.S. manufacturers who want to be in that market, even if it's things like credit cards and banking. And if we're not there, we're missing out on a billion-person market. Well, not something that uh, Trump has been pretty hard on in hitting other countries with <clears throat> these tariffs. But U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, now he's expected to visit India later this month. And this will be just before the G20 summit, where even President Trump is also expected to meet with India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Will there be dialogue? Oh, I think, I think they'll definitely talk. And then in uh, China, at the end of this week, you're going to have the G20 summit that uh, it's called G20. It's supposedly 20 countries. It's about 37 that will be there meeting. And I expect there'll also be time to, uh, to try and work out some of the trade uh, disputes here as well. Again, one of the things that you hear with all these uh, disputes, whether it's with China, whether it's Mexico, Canada, or with India, is the U.S. taxes that we're putting on goods that are being imported. And a lot of times, I think the media overlooks the high taxes that are being imposed to keep U.S. products products and goods out of these markets, or in the case of, uh, of China, where they're essentially excluding the U.S. beef market. In Japan, they've started to allow more beef products. So you've got a lot of these countries that are arguing against us imposing tariffs when they've had higher tariffs in place and complete bans on some of U.S. goods, services, and products in the past. I think we need to do a better job of explaining out rather than just the response. And in China, we've seen China and the United States in an almost year-long trade war. Earlier today, a spokesperson for China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs made a comment on India's retali retaliatory tariffs. Now, let's take a listen to what he said. Every country has the right to defend its legitimate rights and interests. Now, the U.S. and China are still in this trade war. Could we see a trend here with trade between the U.S. and New Delhi? You know, first of all, I think with China, you're starting to see the Chinese recognize that this fight with the United States is hurting their economy. You've got uh, huge numbers of companies that are moving their capital to Vietnam, to Indonesia, to Malaysia and other locations. And as that capital is flowing out, they're doing that so that they can continue to sell into the U.S. without facing the tariffs that uh, the Trump administration is putting in place. So you're starting to see real slowdowns in the Chinese economy that will put pressure on them to try and reach a deal with the U.S. sooner rather than later. I still think that before the the end of the year, we get a deal with China. I think their slowing economy is going to put pressure on them. I think the same thing is going to be true with India. Uh, they don't want to, to get in a fight with, uh, with a market the size of the U.S. where they have had uh, great access in the past uh, in order to deny us access to their market. And I think that as, as India and the U.S. get together, I think that, again, they'll be able to work out some resolution to this deal. Well, um, there are some winners in these trade deals. Like you said, uh, China is outsourcing a lot of moving their factories to Vietnam to uh, try and avoid these tariffs. Now, this also comes as the U.S. has recently raised serious concern as uh, Trump has threatened to impose sanctions if India purchases oil from Iran and if it follows through with its plan to buy uh, Russian S-400 anti-aircraft missiles. Will the U.S. retaliate with sanctions? 
Yeah, I think you're seeing a lot of global games being played right now. I don't know if you ever played the game Risk when you were a kid, where you're moving all these pieces yeah. around the uh, around the globe. That's what you have taking place now. You've had China in recent years expanding their footprint in uh, Africa, in South America. You've got Russia that's constantly trying to play in other places as well. And it really is this kind of tit for tat. And countries are sometimes uh, playing one against another. India say, well, we'll buy our, our aircraft from Russia if you won't cut us some trade deal over here. We'll buy some oil from the Iranians if you won't cut us some slack here. So it literally is like a balloon where if you squeeze one part, pieces part pop out somewhere else. I think